Well, hello there everyone. We are again back at the Jubilee Model Railway with another unexpected review, which is this. So today we're going to have a good look at the Hornby. Um, there we go, you can see exactly what it is. Flying Scotsman with uh, Hornby's TTS sound. Now this is a railroad edition, so it's uh, not the finest detailed model, but we'll see what uh, what this thing is like. Uh, as I said, this is an unexpected review today. Uh, reason being, the date, the release date, sorry, for this loco was the 27th of July. Um, and it's been out for about three days now, and it's now the 4th of June. I'm not complaining it's come out early, it's actually really nice to see it, locos coming out on time, or, as I said, um, early. So, in this video, we'll have a look at the loco, uh, see what features it's got, and then we'll have a look at the sound, see what it sounds like, and also uh, give it a run around the track, and also see if it's, any, um, if it's worth buying. So the first thing, we got to get this box open. Now this is uh, Hornby's sort of more cheaper packaging, but to be honest, if it does the job, does it matter? No, of course it doesn't. So we'll just, um, oh, some of the stuff fall out there. Move the box out to one side. In here we got the, um, the usual uh, maintenance guide here for the engine. Just look at it there, it says a 462 steam locomotive. Ah, now I've noticed a bit of a problem. See if you can spot the problem with this Class A1. This is not, Flying Scotsman is not an A1. It's actually an A3. So I don't know if that's, so this is a, that's a misprint there. Does it matter? Not really. As long as the engine works fine, who cares about this? I very rarely read these. You know, I give them a quick run in and off they go, really. But anyway. That's that piece of paper, and this one, ah, this is the, there we go, LNER Flying Scotsman A1. I'm pretty sure Flying Scotsman really isn't an A1. I thought it was an A3. I don't know. I, re I yeah, it's got to be. It's an A3 class. Ah, well, I'm sure someone can correct me if I'm actually wrong on that. Uh, as you can see there, this is the uh, sound manual. I'm not going to go through it, I'll use this later on when we go through some of the sounds the logo has, so it just gives you a little bit of uh, info on the CVs and what each number, well, what each number does. So that's enough of that. Next, we got the engine, it's got this nice bit of cellophane around it, just to protect it a little bit, and this uh, sturdy polystyrene, which Hornby had been using this kind of packaging for a long time. But as long as it protects the engine inside and it's not damaged when you get it, then it doesn't matter, does it? Mm, it's a bit of a pain to get out here. Come on. Here we go. So what I'll do, just pop the loco down there. I'm going to turn the camera off a minute, pop it on the line properly and we'll have a, a good close look at it. Right, now I've got the uh, engine on the uh, track here at the uh, Heritage Depot. So let's have a little look at the detail of this engine. We'll start with the front. If I'm honest, for railroad, this is quite nice. You've got the smoke box darts there, and the picked out in silver and the other two bits, which I don't think were on the original railroad a few years back. I don't know. Uh, you got the numbers there, 4472. And the buffers are also painted like a silver colour, which is also quite nice. And there you've got the uh, little um, hole there for the vac pipe. I'm pretty sure there's um, a detail pack in this. Well, I'm not sure because it's a railroad. So you come down the side, you've got the cylinder cases there. Um, on the premium models, they do have red lining on them, just to spruce it up. But, as again, this is a railroad model, so it won't have it. All the mechanisms looks really nice, straight, and nicely done. You got the uh, printed, not etched, uh, Flying Scotsman uh, name there. Got this, uh, yep, yeah, separately fitted handrail right across there, and I believe, so there, yeah, this one is at the front as well. 
and obviously this is the uh, signal chimney version. Carry on along the line engine, sorry, we've got some more handrails which are not separately fitted, they're moulded. Uh, you've got the 4472 uh, number there. It's quite crisp, yes, but it's the wrong lettering. Uh, on the real loco, these have more of a, uh, sorry, a 3D effect on them. These are just uh, flat yellow. But again, this is the cheaper model. And then you've got the LNER at the rear. Same again on the real lo loco, it is a th more of a 3D look to them. Uh, you've got the nice white surrounding the tender, yeah, that's quite nice. If we come down here, we have all the axle boxes and all the rest of it. Let's just uh, have a look at the top of the loco. As I said, you've got the signal chimney there. You've got the nice white lines around the uh, boiler there. You've got the, uh, uh, the, sorry, the safety valves there. And we got the, I don't know, would you call them vents? Not a sunroof on a train, would you? They're more vents, which don't move, which you would guess. We come back to the coal load. Well, I've got to be honest, it's a lot better than the old Flying Scotsman Railroad. Much more realistic, but not as realistic as it could be. And then we just come round to, to the uh, rear of the tender there. you got the nice small coupling, which is nice, because, again, I think the old railroad had the massive coupling. we got some handrails down here. I don't know if they're moulded or not. Yeah, they're moulded. Once you've got the uh, steps, the buffer beam looks nice with these picked out in silver again. Uh, you obviously got this is a corridor tender. So yeah, overall, for a railroad model, Hornby have done a really nice job on this. We're not going to look at the other side because it's exactly the same. And also, I've noticed, yes, there is glazing in the windows, which again wasn't on the original. Um, Flying Scotsman Railroad Edition. So Hornby seem to have updated these Railroad Edition models um, with a little bit more detail to pick up which makes it look that bit better. So that is really nice. And yes there is a detail pack if I just get the box here. You can just see it there. We got another uh, coupling for the front of the loco which I'll not be putting on. You got the uh, vac pipe there and you've got the separately fitted brake lines. Well, that's a nice little uh, touch there, isn't it? So if we get rid of that, come back to the loco. So I think the next part is, which is also the main feature of this engine, is to hear what the TTS sound is like in this loco. So I'm gonna go now put it on the main track to see what it's like. Right, the engine's now on, let me just, uh, there we go, that's better. The engine's now on one of the main running tracks. I'm going to use the little sound guide to, uh, well, see and see what functions we've got on this one. So on this uh, TTS sound, we have 17 functions. Not as many as some of the others, but to be honest, I don't use hardly any of them. The whistles, maybe. So that's about it. So, as usual, number one, turn the sound on. There we go. Now that is the sound on. Um, nice volume there. So, um, number two is whistle four bursts. So let's go for that one. Yeah, it's good. And it's got like an echo sound to it at the end, which is nice to make it sure it's like outside in real life. Next one is number three, which is another whistle two bursts. Again, really nice crisp whistle there. Now we come to uh, number four, which is whistle short blast. So, there we go, three different types of whistles there, which is a very good feature on these uh, TTS sound models, plenty of different whistles. So now we go to number five, which is door slam. I'm guessing that's the carriages because this doesn't have any doors. But that was that. Now we go to F6, which is wheel slip. One of my favourite features on these um, locos.
obviously you do get that on the P2 Loco and all the others, which is really nice. Nice feature, that. Uh, number 7 is coal shoveling. You all know what that sounds like. That's not too bad, not as tinny as maybe some of the others I've heard. Then we go down to number 8, which is uh, blowdown. Then we go down to number 9, which is the safety valve. That's actually quite quiet for a safety valve. Normally they're very, very loud, so I don't know whether. So now we go into uh, double figures. Now number 10 is the injectors. There we go, that's the injectors there. Uh, number 11 is cylinder cocks. And we go to number 12, which is the brakes. Which, as I mentioned before, do not do it automatically with the engine stops. And then we go down to 13, which is the blower. Um, number 14, which is the guard's whistle. Now on previous uh, TTS models, these have been rubbish. So let's hope they've uh, improved it a bit on this loco. Uh, well, there's the answer. No, it's still awful. That one, so we won't be using that. Um, 15 is coupler clank. usual sound there, which I bet I would probably never use again after this video. Uh, the next one, oh dear, is uh, the silly one, Fireman's Breakfast. Hmm. Here we go. I have absolutely no idea why they just put on there, just having a slight mess about it, if I'm honest, but yeah, there we go, it's on there. So that is all the sounds that this logo actually has. Pretty good. Uh, some of them are a bit sounding a bit better, except for the whistle. Um, I don't know why they can't sort that out, but they really need to. So the next bit is to get the engine to go um, in reverse, which will move the camera. This has had its run in, but for some reason it still starts off quite rough. I don't know if it's a slight decoder problem or motor or just needs a little bit more running in, but there we go. Let's get the whistle going and we'll uh, set off. See what I mean? It's quite jumpy when it starts off. Let's go the other way. See there? It's quite jumpy. Just stop it for there. Right now I'll uh, send it around the track so we can have a couple of views of it uh, running a bit more speed around the track.
So uh, that was uh, it uh, running around the uh, layout here. Um, yeah, it actually runs really smoothly after it gets going. For some reason, as you probably did see, um, it does seem to jerk quite a bit while setting off. Um, I'm not sure if that's just a running in issue or an issue with the decoder or the motor, as I said uh, earlier. But I'm always doing videos and I'll let you know as this engine uh, gets a bit older. See if that uh, that gets any better. I'm not sure. Um, so overall, is this worth buying? Uh, yes, I really do think it is. Uh, I paid £99 for this. Um, a loco with sound for 99 quid is is still a bargain, as you know. Because if you bought this, I I went did a bit, a bit of price check, and you can buy a premium one, uh, which is second hand from Rails of Sheffield, uh, for 99 pound, which is a good price for the premium one. But then, if you wanted to put sound in it, well, what's that going to cost you? Another 100, 120 quid. So there you're looking at £220, 120 quid more than this. Not worth it. I'm sorry, it is just not worth it. So, yeah, runs fine. I'm really surprised of the way that this thing looks, with all the nice detail that this got on it. Really good for a railroad edition. But, it's not good enough. Um, so my plans, I'm getting rid of the lettering all across both sides, and getting nice... Uh, transfers with a proper 3D lettering on it. Uh, we'll be replacing the printed names with uh, etched metal um, etched metal uh, plates to go on there. Uh, I've just ordered a headboard, a nice blue headboard saying the um, the Flying Scotsman, which is the name of the train it used to run, not just the name of the engine. Uh, I'm going to put a local crew in it. We're going to put uh, non-working lamps at the front and just basically put a bit more detail on this engine, just spruce it up a bit. I was going to put a double chimney and the smoke deflectors, but to be honest, I don't know if I want to go hacking the chimney off this brand new engine. Not wise. So I will do a follow-up video when all those uh, design modifications um, have been done. So, guys, thank you very much for... Uh, watching this quick review which I, well, not quick, you know what I'm like I like to show you what the engine is like um, oh sorry, I have forgot one thing, I always do when I first got this out of the box I noticed it weighs quite a bit which is a big, big pet hate of mine when steam locos just don't weigh enough this one, no problems, it's got a great weight up, up here at the front and the wires as normal up between the loco and the tender right i've said everything now so guys thanks for watching my videos and keeping up the support on the uh, layouts and the projects and stuff that's going on um drop in a comment let me know what you think of this loco and if you haven't got one i think you should i know the couple of bit of the running issues but once it's up and running it's brilliant so that's the end of the video guys, uh, hopefully we'll be doing uh, another review or another video uh, soon. That's it for now guys, speak to you all in another uh, video at Jubilee Road.